Hey everyone, this is Shintai. Once again, I finagled one of the writers of Katawa Shoujo to talk to me today. Here with me, I have the Hive Mind. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Let's get everyone acquainted. Why don't you just say who you are, what you are to the project, and get everyone acquainted. As you already said, I'm the Hive Mind. I wrote The Path for Emmy. Pretty much all I did. <laughs> hey, that's good enough for me. You already did an interview with uh, Generation 2012. I just want to do a quick preface. Any questions that I don't ask that you, the audience, feel that I missed, chances are it was already answered in that interview. So after you watch this, go ahead and check that one out. Awesome. My first question is, why Emmy? Was it that you were kind of just saddled with her and you were just like, oh, well, I guess I'm just stuck with Emmy? Or did you, like, yeah, I want to do Emmy. That That's the one I wanted. I actually really wanted to do Rin, and I didn't get her. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just be the editor then. Then whoever we had that was writing Emmy dropped. I mean, this is like... We had just switched to the new forums, I think. Things were still like super shaky and it was a lot of people showing up and dropping out all the time. So whoever was doing Emmy or whoever had initially volunteered to do Emmy either just kind of dropped out or decided they were going to focus on something else or whatever. I don't, I don't even remember who it was. So it became this problem for us where nobody was writing the path. I don't remember who asked me to do it. I actually think it was the second project lead we had who didn't finish project. He wound up leaving again, I think even before we released Act One. It seems to me that the project originally started on very shaky ground. There was no real focus. Would you say that that's the case? Yeah, I'd say the fact that we managed to survive that first year of people popping in and popping out, comical power struggles and whatnot going on that I did my best to stay out of. That's usually the best way, stay out of drama. I just wanted the thing to get made and I didn't really give a shit who was involved in making it. I never really took sides, so I never really got any backlash. <laughs> Nobody ever noticed that I was just like, all right, whatever, sure, we'll switch project heads or whatever. Anyway, so that one of the project heads, one of the early project heads was like, oh, well, you've written like sample scenes and stuff. We need somebody to do Emmy. Would you do Emmy? And I had written path outlines for Emmy and Rin. I think that was the two I had done. But the idea was that I wrote the outlines and someone else was going to write them. So like Aura wrote Rin and, and took it in a completely different direction and, and did a great job. And then I abandoned whatever the hell it was that I had originally come up with Emmy. He was like, well, nobody's doing this, so would you do it? And I was like, yeah, all right. I had nothing going on at the time, so I was bored. That's how I got into it in the first place was being bored. You said that initially you were going to be the editor. Did you actually do any editing? And when you became the Emmy writer, were you worried about how the editing would turn out? And do you think it turned out okay? I was never really worried about the thing. I don't mean to like downplay it and say it's not an important job because it's super important. I edited a few scenes, none of which are in the final game because they were all very early things. I think maybe some of the stuff in Grid 1, the mythical Grid 1, I actually edited but I, I really don't remember. I'm actually unfamiliar with Grid 1. What is that? We made a thing called Grid 1, and it, well, not a completely different beginning, but it, it was structured differently. It was random which girl you encountered first. The only thing you had to do was you had to encounter all of the girls once, and it was really shitty. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, that does sound pretty shitty. <laughs> it's pretty bad, because there was this idea that we'd have, like, Act 1 was initially going to be entirely randomized. And then depending on your choices during the randomized Act 1 scenes, you would get locked into one girl's festival, or you'd wind up on the roof. Although I don't even think we had a rooftop scenario. I don't remember, I never played Grid 1. We kind of discarded Grid 1 pretty early on, and it showed up somewhere. Someone found it and dug it up. Much to your chagrin? I mean, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> yeah, you don't seem like that kind of guy. <laughs> but it was like, oh, God, guys, all right, fine, fine. You can look at this incredibly bad early build. The art was completely different. It was with our first artist. Is that the one where the girls were all wearing, like, green sweaters? All that stuff is grid one material. And shortly after that, the artist was like, you know what? I don't like my drawing enough to want to draw this whole game. And he left. Fair enough. I view the whole artistic process for drawing as some sort of dark voodoo. So if somebody thinks that they suck and they don't want to draw anymore, I'm like, all right. All right. Speaking of Act 1, though, a question I have regarding that is the current Act 1 was that a combined effort, or was there someone that wrote the majority of it and got cues from the other writers, like, okay, how should 
this character act? Or, you know, how, how was that process? I want to say that most of Act 1 was written by Aura and A22. So Rin's writer and Shizune's writer. That makes sense. Shizune plays a big part in Act 1, I feel. So, yeah. I wrote a couple of the Emmy scenes. So some of the Emmy scenes, and, and if not the scenes, I'd come in and tweak the dialogue. And everybody did that. So everybody came in and, and fiddled with their paths dialogue. But the majority, like all the walking around and the cripple wonderland line is auras, I think. All the early encounters with Kenji are all A22. So it's all his fault. Turned that dude into a legend. That was one of the un unexpected things. I hate him. I think he's just a rubbish character. That's interesting. <laughs> he's just so shrill. Ah, he's like Gilbert Gottfried. Looks like Harry Potter. <laughs> I always had the Harry Potter thing, but I didn't think of uh, Gilbert Gottfried. That's pretty good. <laughs> like, I just imagine he'd have that kind of a voice. Wow, that just makes me think of Iago. Even when the time came for me to, like, write scenes with him, I found him hard to write because I, I didn't like him. <laughs> So since you didn't like his character, you felt it was difficult to write for him because you didn't feel you had a good grasp of him? It's not that I didn't have it. It's there was such a chore like, OK, what can he rant about now? Like, all right, how do we get him to go on a long ass rant about the feminists again? He's a very one note character. Now, something I found that was very interesting about the Emmy route was this was something I thought would be much more focused on in the Hanukkah route. And it, it is touched upon in that route to a certain extent and is frowned upon. But I was actually really surprised in the Emmy route, how Emmy was so adamant against white knighting. What made you think to bring that element into the route? I think it's because by the time we started writing the scenes where she got really pissed off, I had kind of gotten just, white knights are like the most annoying goddamn people. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Especially because it doesn't work that way. There's this underlying motivation to the whole white knighting thing that if I show up and defend this girl from whatever, her troubles, she will have sex with me. There's this unsavory motivation. Like, I had grown, at that time especially, I had grown to just really, I didn't like the whole concept of white knighting just rubbed me the wrong way and still does. Yeah, I don't like it either because I feel that there's a certain sneakiness to it, very deceitful. At face value, it seems, oh, he's being nice, but deep down, he's just trying to get his own way. Exactly. How about the Emmy and Rin friendship? What made you think, or whose idea was it, to make Emmy and Rin friends? I honestly, I couldn't tell you whose idea it was because it was one of those super early things. So it's always kind of been there. It's always kind of been there. They were like, well, because she doesn't have arms and she doesn't have legs. So you put them together and they're a complete person. I think Ren even points that out at some point. You're probably not as appropriate to ask this, but was it the same for Shizune and Lily to not like each other? Was that always from the start or are you not sure? I want to say it came up fairly early. It was a little later on. It wasn't like from the get-go. Because from the get-go, it was like, well, Emmy and Ren are obviously going to be a pair. And then... Because I think the initial page that Raita did has that Lily is a very mothering character and that Hanako is a very shy character. They were always linked too. That was one of the like the first things was like, well, these two are definitely a pair. And then you had Shizune with nobody. So we had to make someone up for her. I think it was a little later, probably by the time we actually started to try to come up with scenarios where the whole, the, the little rivalry started. It probably didn't become a focal point until a little later on. And then it became like a big deal. How do you feel about how Emmy has been received compared to the other characters or the routes in general? Do you feel that she's gotten the amount of praise that you expected? Was it a little less or were you really surprised about how many people enjoyed the Emmy route? That's a really good question. When I finished the path and I made the final edits to it, we had been critiquing each other's paths for so long. We were so vicious to one another in our critiques. I mean, we were really, really hard on ourselves. I mean, and it, it worked. It worked that we were that hard on ourselves because a lot of people seemed to have liked it. But we were so, I mean, we would get into some pretty vicious conversations. And, you know, I at least at, at one point walked away from the project for like a year, not a whole year. I think there was probably at least once for everyone, there was a point where they'd walk away for like a month or so just because things would get so heated. A Corporal Crud just flat out left. Well, I mean, he left for other reasons, too. He had other things going on that were more important to take care of than writing a VN. Okay, that's cool. But I'm sure there was 
probably an element of like, God, I'm just tired of this. Like it's, we all got real tired of it. So by the, by the time I finally finished it and I had taken into account all of the criticism and everything again, and I had gone back and done another pass and tweaked some scenes. And the one thing that I always got flack for was the sex scenes were always too short. I remember that like they they kept, oh, you gotta, you gotta describe more. You gotta get more in depth. And I'm like, I don't, I don't fucking want to. Yeah, that's uncomfortable to want to write about. I couldn't figure out a way to make it not awkward. So in at least one case, I just deliberately made it awkward. I'm sure you're referring to the anal scene. Yeah, I, just, I was just like, oh, fine, this is going to be awkward as hell because I cannot make this sexy. I couldn't write it with a straight face. I couldn't do it. Actually, you just answered another question of mine was, why did you make the anal scene so humorous and not more serious? Don't get me wrong. I'm glad you did it that way because I loved it. But I just wanted to kind of get in your head about why did you do it that way. But yeah, that, that's a pretty good reason. There's a cartoonist, Erica Moen, had an online, uh, like a comic diary, and she'd post these little comics. And she actually posted a thing about anal sex where, similar to the end of the track shed scene, she pushed back and it really hurt. And it happened to her, I guess, frequently because she'd get excited. And I was like, well, well that's how it's ending. She's going to hurt her ass. <laughs> And I thought, well, obviously it's the, the first time either of them have done this. It would be kind of awkward anyway, wouldn't it? This is what I'm thinking to myself. So, fine. And I couldn't write it erotic if I wanted to. I drew the short straw, so to speak, when it came time to write Emmy's path because nobody else had volunteered for it. And when we were all trying to decide, because for whatever reason, at that point in development, we were like, we need to change up the sex scenes and we need to at least have an anal scene. So someone's got to do one. I'm sorry, but just thinking about guys just sitting around, I was like, okay, we gotta have an anal scene. That's just funny to me. One of the more bizarre days of the project was, like, discussing. We were like, well, are they too bland? Like, they can't just do it missionary every time, can they? As much as we didn't want to, like, focus the whole game around sex, I think we maybe overthought some of it, too. That's why there's such variety, is because we were like, well, shit, we need to work this in somehow. Well, I'm going to have to put you on the spot here, man. Other than, of course, your own route, the Emmy route, what was your favorite route? Probably my favorite path is Rin's path. The only reason my favorite path is Rin's path is because it is the least normal path. Well, Rin is the least normal girl, so that would make sense. I feel like out of all of us, Aura probably did the best at creating a scenario that was almost like uncomfortable and going into it expecting a traditional thing would probably be the most caught off guard by Rin's path. And that was kind of part of the goal of Emmy's path was to sort of catch people off guard a little. I think Aura did a way better job of it. Yeah, honestly, I really regret reading Rin's first. I think that should be one that you should either like leave last or like do later. Yeah, she was supposed to be the hardest to get. I don't think she actually wound up being the hardest to get. Yeah, I think that was written on that dude Rita's original thing, like it ha she was the hardest one to get. And it used to be super hard to get on her path. And it's one of those things we changed because we were like, that's dumb. Getting off the game for a moment, let's get a little bit of insight in your own personal taste. Do you play video games? Are you into anime? You know, what kind of things are you into? I play a lot of games because I'm lazy. I watched a ton of anime, didn't really watch a ton of it, but I was really into it up until you know, like five years ago or so. I just kind of stopped keeping track of it, got similar. I was uh, super disappointed with the offerings. One particular year, maybe like 2009, I was like, man, these all suck. There was literally like nothing caught my interest and I just kind of was like, all right, I'm done. I guess it's all old stuff now. Every once in a while, like, I'll throw on Cowboy Bebop every once in a while, and Samurai Shampoo, and actually super into Fooly Cooly when the um, project first started, and of Rin's personality was from that show. She was a very uh, Haruko-esque. Wow, oh, that would have been cool. <laughs> Just thinking about it, it's like Rin is Haruko, that'd be awesome. She wasn't like running around hitting people with guitars or whatever. I think it'd be a very different game. There was that sort of that aggressive streak and very all of the early dialogue and some of the early stuff that I wrote with her. She was very there was a lot of back and forth. She was very into like wordplay and, and arguments and she kept her own point system, which I think there's even like a, a vestigial line somewhere where she looks back after a, an answer you give and she's like three points to you or something like that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. 
like these days I watch Breaking Bad. I was into Mad Men for a while, but I'm not so much into it now. I don't know. I got kind of bored. That's that's pretty much it. All right. I think my final question is: Are you generally content? with the project or are you pretty much satisfied with Katao Shoujo as a whole or particularly the Emmy route or do you feel that there's still like some things that you should just go back to and fix or are you generally like you know what I'm cool with this I like how it came out leave well enough alone I'm actually fine with how it came out for like a while I was like God, it kind of sucked and there was a huge response and, and a surprising number of people actually liked Emmy's path I was like, okay, well, I should maybe play my own path and see how it all turned out when it was all said and done. And again, it's, it's one of those cases where I walked through most of the scenes and seen the direction and everything. And I'm like, all right, that's, that looks okay, fine, whatever. But then I sat down and I played through the whole thing. And it was maybe like a month ago at this point, I actually sat down and played through the whole Emmy's path. I don't really have any major regrets. If I were going to do it again, I may have done a different conflict than what the conflict winds up being in this one. I'd also probably set it somewhere else and change everything else about it too. And at that point, you've just written a whole different story. So maybe one day I'll do that, but I doubt it. <laughs> I'll, I'll do something else. If it means anything, I really like the Emmy route. And if you ever decide to do some other VN or something, I'd like to read it because I think your writing is really good. Well, might as well self-promote a little. I have a Tumblr. I announced a new project but I need an artist. It's the hivemindwrites.tumblr.com. There's only like two posts on it, one of which is titled The New Thing that describes The New Thing, which is a comic that I want to do, but I don't have an artist yet. Very cool. I'll be sure to put that link in the description. So everyone be sure to check that out. Any aspiring artists listening to this right now, this may be your chance. All right, man. Thank you very much for appearing on this interview. It was great to have you. Always happy to have someone listen to me ramble for a little bit. It's always fun. Be sure to check out the Katao Shoujo game and to check out his Tumblr. It's all awesome. And that's pretty much it. Take care, everyone. See ya.